Hi guys, it's Alice and today we are going to do something a little bit different. I am going to go through all of the classics that I have read and the ratings that I gave them. I got this suggestion from Instagram and I just thought it could be interesting and we're also in a slightly different location because I need my computer for this. I haven't really prepared for this at all. Usually I prepare quite a lot before I start filming videos. like. I make notes of what I want to say and all of that, and for this I haven't done anything. So that's going to be interesting. Now classics are always interesting to talk about because I feel like a lot of people put classics on this pedestal, like above other books, which I understand, but I don't really do that. Like I read classics for the same reason I read all other books, and it's because I want to, and I rate them very much the same way. And I feel like just because something is a classic doesn't mean it's necessarily for everyone. I also haven't studied any of these books, except maybe a couple in high school. So I am well aware that maybe I disliked some of them because I didn't really understand them. So there's also that, and yeah, maybe some of them I just didn't get. Also, I think that we can all have different opinions about books and still exist in the same space. I feel like I'm saying all these things because I know that there are some books on here that people love and I didn't, so I'm like nervous. But yeah, sorry in advance for those. <laughs> so we're just gonna go on to Goodreads and just go through all of the books that I have on my classic shelf because those are all the classics that I've read. And on that shelf we have 104 books, which I just realized I'm gonna have to like put a picture up of all of them here. That's gonna be so much work. Oh my god. Anyways, a lot of the books on the shelf are also like modern classics, so not all of them are like super old. Anyways, I think we should just get into it. I'm gonna sort these by rating, and we're gonna start with the lowest rated books and work our way up so we sort of finish on a high note. And I'm obviously not gonna go into depth about all of these because there are a lot of them. But yeah, enough chit chat. Let's just get into it. So I have three books that I've given one star. We have The Oasis by Mary McCarthy, which I don't remember a whole lot about. I just remember that I didn't feel like it worked very well. We have The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne, which I read quite a few years ago and I like hated it. It's a very short book, but I had such a hard time getting through it. I was just so not into it. And then we have Oronoko by Opera Ben, which is like a little thing from the 1600s. I think it's one of the first things that was ever published by a woman and it's like super racist so I gave it one star. <laughs> Moving on to two star books. The first one is one of those books that I was thinking about when I was like we can all have different opinions because I know so many people love this book but I read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott and I gave it two stars. <laughs> I read this like five years ago and I just couldn't get into it for some reason. I feel like maybe I wasn't in the right mood, but I just, I don't know. I had such high expectations for that book. I was so sure I was going to love it. And a lot of people actually still recommend it to me because I don't think they know that I've read it. And I just, I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. I was really bored and it was just, yeah, it was not my jam. Maybe if I reread it, I would like it better, but I also got rid of my copy and I feel like maybe I just didn't like it. <laughs> I do still really want to see the movie though because I feel like I'll enjoy the story in that kind of format. I actually had tickets to go right before Corona came and shut everything down and now it's not in theaters anymore. But yeah, maybe I would like it better in movie format. Then we have The Sailor Who Fell From Grace With The Sea by Yukio Mishima. This is a Japanese classic and I don't remember anything about it. We have Breakfast at Tiffany's by Truman Capote. I read this in high school, not for class, but just I was in high school and I just remember being like, meh. And then we have Notes from the Underground by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And this is one of those books I am well aware it just went like, I didn't get it at all. Like I just, I didn't understand it. Next we have The Old Man and the Moon by Shen Fu, which is one of those little black penguins and I don't remember anything about it. We have The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier, which is also one of those little penguins. I remember the atmosphere was good, but the rest was just kind of meh, like the plot was a little boring. 
Then we have The Old Man in the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. And this is a really interesting one because this is another book that I get recommended a lot because I read it before booktube and I've never talked about it. But I don't know if I really get along with Hemingway's writing. I I don't know, maybe I should reread that actually. Maybe I would like it better now because I feel like my tastes have changed quite a lot since I read that book. Then we have Vothic by William Beckford. I read this last fall. It's like a gothic classic. It's super weird. I still remember a lot of the story, which I guess is a good sign, but it's so odd. We also have The Woman in the Dunes by Koba Abe, which is also kind of odd. And this, I feel like I probably would have given this three stars if I didn't have such high expectations for this book. I, for some reason, I just latched onto it and I was like, I'm gonna love this book. And then I didn't. Season of Migration to the North by Tayyip Sali. I read last year. I've completely forgotten about it. Then we have A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess, which is another kind of controversial one. I didn't like it. I just, honestly, I didn't really understand it. Like, I couldn't get into it. I found the way it was written so, like, I just couldn't get beyond the writing style. And I remember I reviewed this book and someone commented, like, the slang is made up. You need to, like, figure it out as you go along. And I'm like, yeah, I understand that. But I couldn't... <laughs> couldn't figure it out. <laughs> We're then moving on to three star reads. The first one I have is Young Anne by Dorothy Whipple. I love Dorothy Whipple. She's one of my favorite authors and I really enjoyed this. I think that was her first book that she wrote and I think you can sort of tell. <laughs> then we have A Slip Under the Microscope by H.G. Wells, another one of those little penguin classics. Don't really remember anything about it. Then we have The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan, which I enjoyed, but I didn't love. A really interesting classic that I've read is Ubik by Philip K. Dick. This is a science fiction classic, and I reviewed it on this channel, and I was like, this is one of the craziest things I've ever read, and it still is. I think that if I reread it, I might give it four stars, because it was very confusing the first time around, but I feel like maybe on a reread, I would appreciate it more, if that makes sense. Then we have Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. I, that is not how you say it, but whatever. I don't remember a whole lot about this, except that I think it's about a woman who cheats on her husband. Another Ernest Hemingway that I have read is Hills Like White Elephants. This is, I think, a short story, and we read this for English class in high school. And I think the reason that I liked it so much is that we studied it, which made me understand it a lot more. And I also just loved my English teacher. She made everything really interesting. Then we have an F. Scott Fitzgerald, This Side of Paradise. I think it's a short story collection, don't remember anything about it. The Cornish Coast Murder by John Bude don't remember anything about that either. Then we have Persuasion by Jane Austen. I don't remember a whole lot from this. I think that if I reread it, I would give it four stars. I think when I read it, I was like not in the mood for it at all. And because of that, I like didn't enjoy it as much as I could have. Then we have Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith, which is a crime classic and it's really good. I think that you can see how that book has made an effect on writers today. Like, I think it's very impactful. Then we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. Enjoyed it, but didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to. I think that I had it hyped up a little bit. Then we have Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, which is one of the very few Dickens novels that I've ever read. It might be the only one, actually. And I enjoyed it, but I think that I think that it was a little obvious in some ways. Next we have a Norwegian classic, which is Die Døde Sjern by André Bjerke. This translates to The Lake of the Dead. There is no English translation of this available, unfortunately. But this is so creepy and spooky and atmospheric. I really, really enjoyed it. The only reason I gave it three stars instead of four is that it has quite an outdated view on women. But like the actual mystery and the spookiness is just so good. Another Norwegian classic is Per Gint by Henrik Ibsen. 
Henry Gibson is one of Norway's most famous writers. This is a play and we studied it for school. And I feel like most Norwegian students have studied some sort of play by this author in school, like everyone has to go through that. Then we have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I really like Virginia Woolf, but this wasn't my favorite by her. And then we have Miss Ranskill Comes Home by Barbara Bauer. I really enjoyed this, but I mixed this book up with another Persephone classic. And I think that the other one that I'm mixing it up with was better, but I don't remember what it's called. Then we have two Christmas classics. We have The Santa Claus Murder by Mavis Doriel Hay. Don't remember a whole lot about it, but I think Santa kills someone. Then we have The Silent Night's Christmas Mysteries by Martin Edwards. This is a short story collection. And then something that is not Christmas related. We have The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. I read this... I feel like very early on my booktube channel and I remember people like loving this book and for some reason I didn't love it as much as everyone else. We have another F. Scott Fitzgerald, it's May Day and this is like a short story I think or like a novella. We have The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is a short story collection and it's really really good. I gave it three stars because not all of the stories are that good but like the ones that are really good are like excellent. We have another Dorothy Whipple called High Wages. I really enjoyed it. We have The Pearl by John Steinbeck which is very short and it was interesting but it wasn't great. Then we have Casino Royale by Ian Fleming, and this is the first book in the James Bond series, and I actually have all of the books in that series, and I really enjoyed Casino Royale, and I've read some of the other books in that series when I was quite a lot younger, but I don't remember which ones, and I bought all the books thinking I wanted to reread the whole series. I don't know if I want to do that anymore. I really like the James Bond movies. But even those have like problematic things in them. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to spend time rereading all of those books. We have another short story collection, Ghost Stories by Peter Washington. This is only edited by Peter Washington. It's really good. It has a lot of great stories. It's perfect for like Halloween. Then we have Thousand Cranes by Yasunari Kawabata. This is another Japanese classic. Don't remember anything about it. We have Carol by Patricia Highsmith. I think this is also published under the title The Price of Salt. It was really good, but I think I had kind of high expectations for it, so I was I was not as invested in that story as I thought I was going to be. Yet another F. Scott Fitzgerald. We have The Diamond As Big As The Ritz, another novella. We have Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. I like the Jamaica Inn. It's very atmospheric and I know so many people love that book but I didn't think it was that good. I still need to read Rebecca. I keep saying I'm gonna read it and then I never do and I think that Daphne du Maurier is an author I would love if I could just find the right book. Next we have a non-fiction book. It's a memoir. It's Dust Tracks on a Road by Zora Neale Hurston. Really interesting and I really want to read more of her work. I think I have Their Eyes for Watching God on my shelves. I've heard it's great, so I'm excited. We have another Virginia Woolf, A Room of One's Own. We're on to four stars now, I can see. And A Room of One's Own is really, really good. I think, again, Virginia Woolf's writing style is not for everyone, and it's a little bit difficult to get into, but I feel like A Room of One's Own is one of the easier books to read by her. Another book that I gave four stars is Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is really good. I really need to reread it because I've forgotten a lot about it. We have 20 Love Poems and A Song of Despair by Pablo Neruda. This is an excellent poetry collection. I would really recommend it. Another poetry collection that is amazing is Sappho by Sappho. She was, I think, an ancient Greek writer. She was assumed, at least, to be a lesbian, and her poetry is just amazing. It has only survived in fragments, and even then, it's just so good. I've also read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith. This is a really good book. We have The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. Really short. The classic fairy tale, really good. 
We have Youth Without God by Ödön von Horvath. This is a very underrated classic, I feel. It's kind of reminiscent of like... I mean, it's not the same at all, but if you like 1984, I think you would like Youth Without God. It's really, really good. Then we have Twelve Years a Slave by Solomon Northup. An excellent book. It's difficult to read and the language is quite... At least for me, it was a little bit difficult to get into, but it's a very, very good book. Next, we have the longest classic that I've ever read by far, and it is War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I've mentioned this book a lot. It's really, really good. Like, it's very clearly a masterpiece, but it's so long. Like, it's so long. It's almost painfully long. Like, it's... yeah. Then we have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I read this for school. I'm probably never going to reread this because I think if I read it now, I would absolutely hate it. But we had it for English class and I think that the experience of reading that as a group is what made me like it so much, but I think if I read it now, I would hate it. A more modern classic we have on here is The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. This is like YA and it's so good, I would really recommend it. It's quite short, so it's not that difficult to read. Then we have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, which is a very, very interesting book. I remember when I read it, I kept like thinking, oh my god, this is so effed up. Like, this is, this is so messed up. And I don't think I've read a lot of books that have made me feel that way, but that one really did. Another Persephone classic is Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. I really, really like this one. It's delightful, I feel like is the right word for it. We have Dracula by Bram Stoker. I read this when I was a teen. Should probably reread it. Like, I don't really remember a whole lot about it, except that it was... I remember when I read it, I thought it was surprisingly boring, but I still gave it four stars, so I don't know. Another Persephone classic is The Far Cry by Emma Smith. Really enjoyed it. Under the Jaguar Sun by Italo Calvino. This is translated and it's very atmospheric and really, really weird. Another Jane Austen we have on here is Sense and Sensibility. Don't remember a whole lot from it, to be honest. I think that what I remember is like the movies that I've seen, so I should reread it. Then we have The Complete Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. I love Edgar Allan Poe. I used to be so obsessed with him when I was a teen, which tells you a little bit about what kind of teen I was. I was like real emo, I had black hair, it was a mess. But I loved <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe. We also have Ghostly Tales, Spine Chilling Stories from the Victorian Age, which is a short story collection by several different authors. It's a little bit illustrated, I think, and I usually reread this around Halloween. Then we have another Norwegian classic. It is Is Slotte by Tarja Vesos. This translates to the Ice Palace, and it is available in English. Penguin has published a beautiful edition of this book, and like, the Norwegian editions of this are so ugly, which is one of the reasons I don't have a copy of it anymore. But the English edition is wonderful. Another non-fiction book we have on here is In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. It's a really, really good true crime book. We have The Wild Swans by Hans Christian Andersen, which is a fairy tale. We have I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou, and this is incredible. Like, I think if I reread it, I would give it five stars. I'm actually, like, wondering why I didn't give it five stars. And she has, like, a whole autobiography series, and I really want to, like, keep reading it because she is amazing. Next, we have The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter. Really weird, but really wonderful book. We have The Kraken Wakes by John Wyndham. John Wyndham writes a lot of dystopian fiction, and I really, really like his books. We have Someone at a Distance by Dorothy Whipple, which is one of my favorite books by Dorothy Whipple. We have To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Really, really good book. I think we can all agree that that is a really good book. And that reminds me, I really need to read the sequel. Like, I have it and I've had it for a couple of years since it came out and then I just never read it. Next, we have maybe the most disgusting book that I've ever read, but I also really liked it. And it is Perfume by Patrick Suskind. If you've read this book, you know what I mean. It's like, it's like nothing else. Then we have Inferno by Dante Alighieri. And this is a really interesting one. This is one of the few books that I read 
because I wanted to be able to say that I've read Inferno, which I don't know why I would care about that because literally no one else cares. But I just... it's like a book from the 1300s, it's so old and it's where we have our sort of modern interpretation of hell and it's a really interesting book but it's so difficult to read. I feel like I almost didn't read it because I would read a little bit, it's written in verse. I would read a little bit and then I would have to read on spark notes what I had actually read because I just didn't really understand it. <laughs> then we have another Japanese classic and it is The Hunting Gun by Yasushi Inu. I read this a couple of years ago and obviously I liked it because I gave it four stars but I don't remember anything about it really. Then we have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. This is a really good book and I feel like it's very underrated. If you like the Brontes, you should read this one too and not just the other two sisters. <laughs> then we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. I feel like we all know what this story is about and I really like that book. I think it's worth reading even if you know kind of what it's about. Another Christmas book is The Night Before Christmas by Nikolai Gogol. This might be my favorite Christmas book that I've ever read. It's really really good. Then we have Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I really like this book. I don't remember that much about it really, but I liked this one a lot better than the other one that I read, which was The Pearl. And I really want to read more of Steinbeck's work. I have East of Eden and I think I'm really going to like it. Another Norwegian classic is Kristin Lovransdotter by Sigrid Unset. And this one I actually wrote a whole paper on in school. And everyone in their final year of high school in Norway has to write a kind of big paper about a Norwegian book or books. And I feel like everybody hates that assignment and I kind of did too but there is like a little bit of a risk of not doing it well because you can have that project be a part of your final exam which sucks. Guess what happened to me? I got it as my final exam and what's really funny about that is that my paper was fine like it wasn't great but it was fine and I remember the person who was going to give me the grade, he asked me some questions about it and I just answered something that I read online and when I got my final grade back he was like, I was so impressed by that and I was like, mm, yeah, I didn't, I just stole that from the internet. <laughs> then we have another Edgar Allan Poe, we have The Telltale Heart, which is one of those little black classics and I really like it, it might be one of my favorite stories by Edgar Allan Poe. And then we have The Bloody Chamber and Other Stories by Angela Carter. I really like this book. I don't remember a whole lot from it though, so I should probably try to reread it. Now, finally moving on to the classics that I have given five stars. First we have Animal Farm by George Orwell. This is one of my favorite books ever. I think it's really, really good. It's It just blew my mind when I read it. I thought it was really impressive. Then we have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, another one of my favorite books. I love Anna Karenina. I think it's such a good book. It is kind of long and sort of time consuming to read, but I think that it's just, it's a masterpiece. Then we have And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Probably my favorite Agatha Christie novel that I've ever read. I have read quite a lot of Miss Marple and Poirot, but I think that although I really like those books, they're never, like the mystery is never as good as the one in And Then There Were None. I think that that is her best mystery. Next we have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I really like this book. I especially loved the descriptions of the scenery. We have The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. I don't remember a whole lot about this book to be honest. I don't really know why I gave it five stars that I really like it that much because I just have totally forgotten about it. Then we have A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the first book in the Sherlock Holmes series. We also have The Sign of Four, which is the second book in the Sherlock Holmes series. I really should continue that series. I think I have some more of the books. I read a lot of classics in like 2015 and then I just sort of fell off the bandwagon. <laughs> One of my favorite books ever is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I love The Handmaid's Tale. I think it's so, so good. And this is one of the few books that I've actually reread a couple of times. We also have Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which is my favorite Bronte book. It's one of the first sort of 
more serious classics that I ever read and I remember thinking that it was surprisingly easy to read. Then we have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I know not everyone loves that book, but I really, really love it. Another Thomas Hardy is Tess of the Durbervilles. I don't think... I don't know if that should be in the five-star category, to be honest. I much prefer Far From the Madding Crowd, and looking back at it, I don't think I enjoyed Tess as much as I thought I did, which is a weird thing to say, but... Yeah, I think maybe that's more of a four-star read. Another book from the Bronte sisters is Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. I gave this four stars. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's so melodramatic and I don't know if I'll ever read it again. I think I would have to be in a very particular mood because it's, it's just so dramatic, like unnecessarily dramatic. But when I read it, I was really into it because I was in that kind of mood. Then we have another John Wyndham. We have The Day of the Triffids, which is my favorite John Wyndham and one of my favorite books ever. It's a dystopian novel where these everybody goes blind and these plants are trying to kill everyone. It's super weird, but it's so good. Then we have yet another Norwegian classic. It is A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. I read this in school. I don't think I would have given it five stars if I didn't read it in school. And I learned a lot about that play. It was very controversial when it came out because, spoiler alert, it's like ancient, but spoiler alert, the woman, this is about like a family and a woman, and at the end she leaves her family. And that was considered so incredibly controversial at the time that when they put it up in theaters, because this is a play, they changed the ending because they were like, we can't put this up because no woman would leave her family. And I just think that's really interesting. Next we have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. I really like this book. It's like taking a hit of acid. It's super weird. It's like such uh, it's like really unstructured and just very very odd but I really like it. And yes I do get told a lot like when I tell people my name they're like oh like Alice in Wonderland. I swear to god like 70% of the people I meet say that. And I don't really know why, like, yes, it's it's like Alice in Wonderland, obviously. <laughs> then we have The Dumb House by John Burnside. This is a really, really weird book, but I really liked it. I don't know if I would love it as much on a reread. Then we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, one of my favorite books ever. I understand why people don't get along with it, because like the first bit and the last bit are kind of difficult to get through, but I think that the core of the story it's just so good. I think it's amazing. Another classic that I read for school is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I really like this book. I think it was beneficial to study it. I don't know if I would have loved it as much if I didn't study it and I would actually like to reread it. I actually ended up stealing this book from the school library in high school because I don't know I just took it home and I forgot to bring it back and then no one ever noticed so I just kept it. I don't think I have it anymore but I like found it when I was moving out of my parents' house and I was like, oh, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> Obviously, do not steal books from your library. That's not good. Next, we have 1984 by George Orwell. One of my favorite books. I think it's really, really good. It really, at least for me, it really changed the way that I think about a lot of things. Then we have my favorite book by Dorothy Whipple. It's They Were Sisters. I love this book. If you like Dorothy Whipple or books like that, you're going to love this one. Then we have kind of an underrated book, I feel, because I never hear anyone talking about this, and it is Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This is very, very interesting because it's about this man who is mentally impaired and he takes part in a trial that makes him really smart, but the book is written from his perspective. And in the beginning of the book, he doesn't really express himself very well, like he can't really write that well, so it's written as he would have written it, so it has like no punctuation or anything like that. And it's... it's so good. It's very underrated. It's heartbreaking. It's... yeah. But I feel like if you like science fiction or like light science fiction, you gotta read that one. The last two books I have, finally, we're, we're at the end, <laughs> we have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. This is my favorite Virginia Woolf. It's set over the course of only one day and I think that if you can read it all in one day in the summer it's like absolutely perfect. 
Then we have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins Burnett. This is my favorite childhood classic. I This is one of the very first books that I remember reading and being like, oh my god, so this is what books are. I was so impressed and I was so enamored. I do think that there are things in that book that are problematic and I am aware of that, but I just, I have such nostalgic feelings about the book and I think it's, although there are problematic things, there are also amazing things about that story. Okay guys, I know that was a lot, but we've made it to the end of this journey that we've taken together. At least, these are all the books that I've added to the shelf. I may have missed some, but I don't know, it doesn't really matter. I also feel like filming this video was kind of fun because I usually have so many like notes and things I want to touch on and for this I just went like, I just went with it and it's gonna be a mess to edit, I can already tell, but whatever. I'm sure it'll be like, okay. <laughs> I'd love to know what your favorite classic is, what your least favorite classic is, and also maybe Tell me some controversial or unpopular opinions that you have about a classic that you've read because I feel like that's always fun. And I will see you soon. Bye!